time. Say one, two, three. That's what I want from you. Tangible steps. Okay. The first thing for delayed judgment is uh, the parameters are there if the judgment is not given as uh, per the provided 60 days. The, law, the, the current uh, system requires that uh, the judicial officer should give reasons. Why didn't you deliver this uh, ruling within uh, the specified uh, period? One, I will, in fact, I will follow up what uh, Justice Maraga did, is to write to all the judges, how many judgments do you have, or ju magistrates, how many judgments do you have which are long overdue? And, uh, if possible, I will even tell somebody to take his leave and go and write those judgments and finish them. So that is another another way of clearing them. Because I cannot say they are there. I have to know first, are they there? I believe you know they are there. And uh, I will be able now to say, if you have any judgment or ruling which is long overdue, I'm giving you this uh, number of days, can you write it? And if you cannot uh, complete, please tell me what is the problem, because I also have to understand. Maybe the, the, the judicial officer was sick, so you cannot uh, force him to, to write uh, 60 judgments. I know there are judges with, uh, who have been on transfer with about 70 judgments which are, have delayed. To write to them, when they went to the new stations, they picked uh, other new judgments. So it's the dynamics of the work which... Uh, commissioner you know so you want solutions so the first solution is give every judicial officer with a pending judgment time to write instead of absorbing new judgments so that those who are waiting can know their fate the other one is to know also the problems why are they delayed judgments yet we are many as uh, you are you correctly put it we were 42 and we are delivering judgments on time why are we 150 and they are delayed judgments that is another problem to to be sorted out the other issue is on hearing dates nowadays we have uh, e-diary and you don't want the, the numbers will always be there because if uh, the diary itself is picking the hearing dates, uh, how do you blame it? But uh, I agree with you. My solution will be to ensure that um, we have, as it has been uh, proposed in some of the, uh, the the procedures, equal number of files for each judge, so that. Uh, uh, we don't have somebody with a fewer co number of cases on his cause list, yet others have 20 doing the donkey work and others are enjoying. So my solution to that is to ensure that uh, we, like, we have like a quarterly, a quarterly checkup between January and March, are dates available. By the time we open up uh, April, uh, did somebody miss a hearing date in March in that last court so that he can be given priority? Okay. Uh, let's come to the workings of the Supreme Court. There is this famous case which went to the East African Court, the Mother Karua case, the Honorable Mother Karua case. Do you agree with the decision of the Supreme Court? And why? Okay. I have not interacted so much with the, that specific case, but I've been reading it, that um, the, the matter was heard uh, before the court in... Uh, in um, I'm talking about the Supreme Court decision. Yes, here. yes. It's, yes. It started all the way from the High Court, the Court of Appeal, and the issue involved election petition and uh, I think the Supreme Court uh, was of the view that uh, time had already time had already lapsed to, to hear the matter because by the time the applications were heard when it went back my sister said uh, the, the time had lapsed. Uh, I can say I do agree with what the Supreme Court said because uh, there are timelines with these election petitions. Okay. Yes. Tell us about the timelines, now that you talked about the timelines. 
Yeah, it's provided in the Constitution and the Elections Act that uh, uh, an election petition has to be heard within the period of six months. And that uh, time does not stop running. So it's incumbent upon any... Where, the, where do you get that the time does not run, uh, does not stop running? Because it talks about six months. It is now the jurisprudence which has come up, including uh, the case uh, you are referring to, because I think the, the main issue was uh, I've been, uh, I went to the Court of Appeal for an appeal. When I came back, I was told time did not stop running and uh, my case was not determined substantively. So that has been uh, the, the issue. Time, okay, the six month is with, from the, where the case is instituted not uh, at the su Supreme Court level where we say High Court two months, Court of Appeal two months, Supreme Court two months. No. The, the six months is that if a matter is filed before the magistrate court involving a member of county assembly, that court should uh, determine it within six months. If it goes to appeal, the presumption uh, it's okay. Not, okay. is that the... Judge, yes. if a High Court judge like yourself was hearing Mother Karua's case. A preliminary objection is raised on the first day, and the judge takes six months, almost the last day of the six months, as you are alleging, according to your interpretation, delivers the judgment on a preliminary objection only. Does Honorable Mother Karua lose her right for the six months? Because maybe six months was used by the court What's your interpretation on whether the six months should be concurrent or consecutive in all the courts? Okay, I don't want to speak for others, but uh, it will be unusual for a judge to sit for with a ruling on appeal, which ordinarily ought to be to be to be raised within the first few days of sitting and uh, deliberating on the, the way the, the petition will be heard. And uh, wait until the last day to deliver your ruling and then you tell the litigant, I can't hear your matter. Uh, I believe uh, that should not be the case. That should not be the if case. If that is the case, if that what is will the, the Supreme case? Court? Yes, what if, will you do as a presiding judge? and the president of the Court of Appeal in such a scenario, or the president of the Supreme Court in such a scenario, where the time has been consumed by the courts. And I can tell you for free, two and a half, almost three months of the six months of Mother Karua was consumed in the Court of Appeal. And almost two months, almost three months was consumed by the High Court. So therefore, I want you to address your mind whether the six months should be consecutive between the courts or concurrent. That which means if the matter comes to the court of appeal and it's remitted back, when does time run for the six months? Okay, I'm getting you. I'll go back to what uh, acting CJ has asked me. The law serves the, the society and not the society to be served by the law. What is the substantive justice in this matter? the petitioner wanted to be heard. And for us to know whether the person who was elected was properly elected, I'll go with this uh, consecutive, so that since another court has been uh, utilizing the six months, which was to be used by the High Court, uh, which was to be used by the High Court, uh, let, then later, let the, let the six months start running from the time you stopped if you stopped after two and a half months. But also, a case is decided on its own merit. I don't know whether the judge felt that you are the one who started initiating this and frivolous and whatever. That's why I'm saying it's not uh, cast on stone where you say consecutive or concurrent. It will all depend on what has transpired because sometimes a judge will see you are the one bringing in delaying tactics I, we sat here, we agreed to hear the matter, the moment a witness is put there, you raise objection, uh, I allow you, we want, because 
Uh, as I've seen uh, a recent decision in the Supreme Court on criminal matters, you have asked me that whenever there is an application for inter in, in, interim orders, the case should continue before the trial court. So in my view, I would even say even if they are preliminary, unless the Court of Appeal stops me as a judge of the High Court to hear the matter, and if the litigant doesn't want to come and proceed with this case, when you come back, I'll tell you my six months is, is running. But if there is a stop time by the Court of Appeal saying the court, the petition court should stop hearing the petition, then time stops running. That's the practicality of it. Okay. What solution do you have on matters involving integrity by judges and magistrates? I believe uh, by now, 80% of the judges were vetted and approved by this commission. You must have looked their background and you are well conversant with their integrity. So integrity is not something which you can say this, this man has a high integrity, it can be lost within an hour for other reasons. What will I do to ensure that uh, the judges and magistrates are people of high moral integrity, professional, and uh, do their work with, so that we enhance uh, the, the good name of the institution? First and foremost, uh, we need uh, training. We also need to know what are the problems bedeviling the institution in form of corruption, real and perceived. What is the problem? How do we go about it? Uh, there are those uh, incidents of corruption in the registry and whatnot. Those ones can be dealt with through technology and uh, transparency. But you know now, every judicial officer decides, uh, 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 makes decision personally on his own or um, the benches in the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. So I'll do my best to try and see how we can uh, reshape the integrity of uh, the judges so that uh, they know it is their utmost uh, requirement that a judge who has been bestowed with the position of being a judicial officer should uh, behave and uh, both as a judge and as a citizen of this country with high integrity and professionalism. So th there is no cure where you can say I'll come with a spray and spray them and they will all be people of uh, integrity. It's something which takes time and uh, it's a negotiated thing. It is uh, uh, something which you have to and also, you will, you will see, because as the president uh, of the Supreme Court and uh, the head of judiciary, the letters will come. I was a presiding judge, and uh, I'll give an example. You have like 10 magistrates under you. You will receive letters, complaints. Some are real, some are just uh, because somebody has lost his case. So, uh, Commissioner, I will endeavor to ensure that this aspect of integrity is enhanced and uh, the judicial officers, because it's cut across, like you say, delayed uh, judgments, that also affects the integrity of the judicial officer. Whoever is waiting for that judgment might think that this judge, why is he delaying? So he loses confidence on the judiciary as an institution. So the processes of work, if they improved integrity also, improves. Okay. The next two questions, which I'm almost through, my Lord, will require cure and spray, maybe some magical solutions. Uh, my Lord, you are aware that JSC has recommended for appointment for two judges to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya. As you are aware, that, has not, that process has not been completed. What would you do to ensure the exercise is completed? And are you up to the task? 
this requires cure. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I've thought about this one, and uh, in my presumption, I knew this question will come across. I can say, uh, you know, you can't say that uh, you will have that spray once again, because this is something which, and uh, maybe you'll give me time we talk uh, about this problem extensively. It's not something I can say in three minutes. And I also be honest and say that um, the JSC also plays, uh, played a role in having this problem. How did you leave it to the extent that you need 11 court of appeal judges at one go? How? You were here, you saw judges retiring, you saw judges being promoted to, to other courts. Why couldn't you have a system of promoting or recruiting like three, four, five? Because the executive is saying it could be an excuse, but that's what they are saying. We read it. How can we employ 41 judges? Where are the resources? I don't want you to speak for the executive. I don't want you to speak for JSC. I want you to speak for yourself and uh, give us a solution. Okay, this, this is my solution. I will approach the, the executive. We have a problem. The Court of Appeal is not working. I yeah. can tell you the Court of Appeal is working, so I want a solution. <laughs> Let us try to, to make it interactive. It's working, but uh, if I'm in Malindi, is it working there? The, the judges are not there. The judges are not in Yeri. The judges are not in... Uh, in Kisumu, it is working, and it sits in uh, benches of three. There are about 14. I'm not exact about the number, so it is not working as it's supposed to be. Maybe that will be the the correct approach, because if it is working at its optimal level, all the the other stations will be having judges, but they are not there. So. My first meeting with the, uh, the executive, I don't, you said you don't want me to talk with them, but uh, I have to meet them, because how do you solve this problem? I can't sit uh, and swear these judges. I can't. I can't. Even if the court uh, orders me to swear them, I will not. I am a man of principles. I have to follow the law. So the law says it's the president to gazette them and swear them. That's the law. So. I cannot sit and say, as the president of the Supreme Court and head of judiciary, I will solve it on my own. I have to go and sit down with the, the person responsible for swearing them, and this is the president. We have this problem. I also have to know their reasons why they are not uh, swearing them. Although we have had it in the public domain, has anybody sat uh, with the president and asked him, why are you not swearing this? Uh, maybe he has his own reason. And I believe it's something which now can be whittled down into, can be whittled down into several uh, parts if, and this is my, my, my thoughts, if there is no problem with the 10 judges of the labor courts, I will have them, so, and the president is ready to swear them, I will say swear them. Then we slowly go to the other problem. If there is no problem with the judges of the, uh, the, the, the land court, there are 20, and uh, the responsible person says, I can swear this one, I will quickly call them and go to state house and have them sworn. Then we go to the court of appeal, what is the problem? So I have to know first what is the problem. You know, I don't want to speculate that there is A, B, C, D. We have to know what is the problem. And uh, if there are, there are individuals within the, those who are vetted where there is a problem. You know, uh, maybe Swahili is a national language. Uh, we Swahili say it's better to take nine rather than wait for ten. So if I'm told I can swear these 40 except 41, I will take it. I know people will say how oh, the, the, the president.